Good morning. Good morning. I'm Father Dexter, and welcome to our Holy Eucharist service. We also, it is Christ, the Feast of Christ the King on this 21st of November. Our opening hymn is hymn number 544. Our service begins on page 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to Amen. God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Amen. The Lord be also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things to your well-beloved Son, 
the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from the second book of Samuel. Now these are the last words of David. The oracle of David, son of Jesse, the oracle of the man whom God exalted, the announced of the God of Jacob, the favorite of the strong one of Israel. The spirit of the Lord speaks through me. His word is upon my tongue. The God of Israel has spoken. The rock of Israel has said to me, One who rules over people justly, ruling in the fear of God, is like the light of morning, like the sun rising on a cloudless morning, gleaming from the rain on the grassy land. Is not my house like this with God? For he has made with me an everlasting covenant, ordered in all things and secure. Will he not cause to prosper all my help and my desire? But the godless are all like thorns that are thrown away, for they cannot be picked up with a hand. To touch them, one uses an iron bar or the shaft of a spear, and they are entirely consumed in fire on the spot. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. The psalm for this morning is found in your insert and is portions of Psalm 132. Lord, remember David and all the hardships he endured, how he had sworn an oath to the Lord and vowed a vow to the mighty one of Jacob. I will not come under the roof of my house, nor climb up into my bed. I will not allow my eyes to sleep, nor let my eyelids slumber, until I find a place for the Lord, a dwelling for the mighty one of Jacob. The ark, we heard it was in Ephrathah. We found it in the fields of Jerem. Let us go to God's dwelling place. Let us fall upon our knees before his footstool. Arise, O Lord, into your resting place, you and the ark of your strength. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness. Let your faithful people sing with joy. For your servant David's sake, do not turn away the face of your anointed. The Lord has sworn an oath to David. In truth, he will not break it. A son, the fruit of your body, will I set upon your throne. If your children keep my covenant and my testimonies that I shall teach them, their children will sit upon your throne forevermore. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Revelation of John to John. Grace to you and peace from he who is and who was and who is to come and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood, and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. Christ according to John. Glory Glory to you, Lord Christ. Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, 
and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So are you a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. Well, welcome to the last Sunday of the Christian year, traditionally recognized as the Feast of Christ the King. Next week is Advent, the start of the new Christian year. But this week, we conclude the year with a proclamation of the kingship of Christ and a call upon all of us to affirm where our allegiances are in the world. In our gospel reading, Pilate asks, are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus replies with his own question, is that your own question or theirs? Jesus is pointing out that if the question came from Pilate, it would be something like this. Are you claiming to be a king challenging the authority of Rome? The answer is clearly no. But if it was a Jewish question, it would be something like this. Are you the messianic king of Israel? To that, the answer would be yes. So Jesus wants us to know or understand who's asking the question and what does it mean? Jesus' truth and the world's truth are totally different from each other. The truth of the world is always changing. It changes upon current events. It speaks to ambition, power, possessions, and selfishness. But Jesus' truth is one of the heart. The truth of Jesus is more than facts. It's one of fidelity God is true to us, which means he is faithful. He shows us his fidelity through his Son and the power of the Holy Spirit. When, we're the true, when the true God is here and in return, we live in truth. That's in we live in a relationship with God. Jesus witnesses to the truth and the reality of God, a revelation that has the effect of judgment. Jesus, not Pilate, is really the judge in this situation. If Pilate kept pressing him, Jesus could have added, I am the truth. As Christians were called by Jesus when he said, be on the side of truth. We're called to listen to Jesus. His teachings need to become part of the fabric of our lives. And if we're serious in seeking the truth, then we need to take Paul's advice in his letter to the Romans seriously. Therefore, we offer our bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. That is our spiritual act of worship. For Christians... Truth isn't an abstract concept. Truth is a way of life. If we choose truth, we choose to know Jesus and follow him all the days of our life. We know Jesus saw the world differently than the world sees the world. He taught that truth is the cornerstone of a healthy relationship and a strong community. 
but truth can be attacked, if it can, but it can't be harmed. It's not of this world. It's, it's in heaven. This is how the Gospels treat, speak of truth. And that's why in John's Gospel, he calls Jesus the true and living way. Healthy relationships require confidence in both partners to be truthful. We have to trust that individuals will do what they promise they'll do. People often manipulate the truth to serve their own purposes, both by what they do or what they don't say. In contrast, Jesus always speaks the truth. And it's hard for us to know what the truth is in today's world. To make matters worse, it's hard to know who we can trust. Everyone seems to have their own agenda. Truth is essential to life. It's essential to a success, successful relationship. And we must remember that we all belong to another realm with a different ruler and a different rule. When it comes to spiritual things, truth is Christ. We leave behind anything else that has power over us. One day Jesus will return and we're going to do our best. When Jesus intends us for us to be the best that we can be, we understand that Christ came to this world and made the ultimate sacrifice for all of us. He's commissioned us to be his disciples. It's our duty as Christians to represent Jesus here on earth. We in this church are charged to be witnesses in service and sacrifice to people that are in need. Now, it was God's intention from the very beginning that human beings made in his image and likeness would have the love and the unity characteristic of the Holy Trinity. Our Lord calls us to build families of faith and charity with parents committed to giving to each other, their children and the community, joyfully giving themselves without reservation. And it's immeasurable joy that's shared by all of us who make up the mystical body of Christ. And that's what God wants us to reproduce here at St. Matthias as we strive to renew all things in Christ to build on earth the kingdom of Christ. When our neighbors encounter us in town, they should experience the same treatment that we accord each other when we worship or when we get together in the parish hall or work on a church project together. They should see us enthusiastically giving to the poor, advocating for those that the society marginalizes. We should all be alert to the needs of others. Our God and neighbor needs to be visible to others so they will be affected by Christ and his church. Now, I recently read about a priest and a soap maker who went on a walk one day to, at the park, and they just sat there and, and walked and, and studied the people who had come out to enjoy the warm summer day. After a while, the soap maker suddenly turns to the priest and said to him, Father, what good is religion? Look at all the trouble and the misery that exists in the world. There's still such sin and sadness, and even after many years of teaching and preaching about goodness and truth, and peace, if religion is good and true, why should this be? The priest said nothing. They continued walking until the priest happened to see a child playing in the dirt. The priest said to the soap maker, look at that child. You say that soap makes people clean, but see the dirt on that child. What good is soap? With all the soap in the world, after all these years, the child is still filthy. 
I wonder how effective soap is after all. The soap maker protested and exclaimed to the priest, but father, soap can't do anything unless it's used. And with a nod, the priest said, exactly. You know, the, in our gospel reading this morning, Jesus is making the same point that the priest made to the soap maker. Namely, it's up to us to acknowledge he is the truth. He is the reality of God. And we're to use this knowledge as his disciples to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. On page 358, let us stand and affirm our faith through the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, his only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the father through him all things were made for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven by the power of the holy spirit he became incarnate from the virgin mary and was made man for our sake he was crucified under pontius pilate he suffered death and was buried on the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures he ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people will be using form three found on page 387. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and for those of others. We pray for the unity of the Anglican Communion and the Episcopal Church. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of Bangladesh. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we give thanks for Christ Church San Antonio and Christ Church Laredo. We pray for our presiding Bishop Michael, our bishops David and Rayford, our priest Dexter, our diocesan seminarians, our president Joe, and our governor Greg. We especially pray for the strength and healing for O.T., Allison, Ty, Clark, Sandra, Robert, Roberta, Roy, Lillian, Linda, Barbara, Gary, Angela, Edie, John, Tom, Joyce, 
Karen, Ray, Dorothy, and David. We pray for our military at home and abroad, but especially for Haley and Nathan. We pray for persecuted Christians everywhere. We pray for our outreach ministries, Divine Food Pantry, Divine Hospice, Hank, Southwest Family Life Center, Military Ministry, Mission Divine, and Project Mend. And let's take a moment so that you can add your own prayers or intercessions. Let us pray. Almighty God, who has promised to hear the petitions of those who ask in thy son's name, we beseech thee mercifully to incline their ear to us who have now made our prayers and supplications unto thee, and grant that those things which we have asked faithfully according to thy will may be obtained effectively to relief of our necessity and to the setting forth of thy glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done, by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And now may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Thank you for doing Alter Guild. <laughs> no problem. I'm happy to do it on top of it. Okay. Peace. Peace to the Lord. With you. Robert, peace. Peace to the Lord. Peace to the Lord, sir. Peace to the Lord. Peace to the Lord. How are you? Peace. I do have that hooked up, so anytime she wants to, it's hooked up. So. Peace of the Lord. Peace of the Lord. Peace of the Lord. the Lord. Game's at 3.30, right? <laughs> peace the Lord. Peace be with you. During announcements, I'm going to be doing a prayer about Stan. a long time coming be able to pass the peace you know it's a, I'm so glad that that we can do that again uh, for a while it seemed like you know where we were going to get out of the situation that we're in with but it's a it's a wonderful sharing of welcoming thy neighbor uh, I would like to welcome let's see we have Pat in New York Samantha in Kentucky Marge in Rhode Island Diane in San Antonio and Susan in San Antonio. So, and I know quite a few folks will be watching us later today and in the next couple days, so welcome. Uh, let's see, uh, today, after the service, for those that can join us, 
We are having advent wreath making in the back. Just have to, if you've never done it before, like me, Meg will kind of guide us through it. Um, we do have some refreshments up back there also. And possum bags. We do have, because today is our third Sunday of the month, we do have the people of St. Matthias, the possum bags for families to take home for activities for the kids. And today is also noisy offering. I know Esme's looking forward to that. Uh, <laughs> and if when you go into the parish hall, you're going to see it is really crowded in the hallway because they started dismantling our kitchen in, at Meg's and my home, and it is now in the hallway. So this coming week, they should be dismantling the 1970s broken cabinets and stuff that's in there. We're keeping the stove and the uh, refrigerator, and that we can see there's a large dumpster out there too where everything's going to go into. And then uh, once they finish our kitchen, then they're going to be doing the kitchen in there, and it should be a lot more counter space, and I think it'll look a lot better. So I think we're really blessed with a contractor that is doing that at no cost to St. Matthias. So that is a real, real blessing. Um, today is, just like we have in life, there are times we have great sadness in our lives. And uh, today I would like to say a prayer for Stan, uh, who was the husband of Joanne and the dad of Stacy. So let us pray. Almighty God, Look with grace upon the sorrows of your servants for whom we pray. Remember them, Lord, in mercy. Nourish them with patience. Comfort them with a sense of your goodness. Remember, Stan, for all the contributions and loving embrace that he provided to his family. Lift up your countenance upon them and give them peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay. So walk in love. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave of himself an offering and sacrifice to God. Our offertory hymn is hymn number 324.
The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right. And a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty. forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Try this again. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night that he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my body, the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. body of Christ. May our Lord Jesus Christ bless you and your do in remembrance of your husband's death. Please take some of the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Cassandra, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Brooke, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Roy, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Erica, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Rob, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. I need to get some more. Okay, just. the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Roberta, the body of Christ, Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with a spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and signalness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. 
Thanks be to God. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn number 291. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you all for coming. You are welcome to join us in the back for the Advent wreath making. Uh, whoever's back there first, maybe plug in some of the uh, hot glue guns. This is the first time we've had to use the...